So we're trying to troubleshoot some rattles on this Avalon and I'm thinking it could be the bushings around the rear sway bar. So we're going to go ahead and try to change those. So you got a, one bushing on each side, just a couple of bolts. Looks like maybe a 13-ish mill, millimeter. Should be pretty easy to swap these out. So let's get some tools and see if we can do that. Looks like it's a 12 millimeter. Well, that was pretty uneventful, which I like. <clears throat> so that's the one that I got. They both seem to be marked 17, but the hole size looks way different, which I take to mean it's worn down. Although I do see little nubs in there, but that doesn't mean anything. That's only on one side. Let's see how hard it is to squish it back in place. Actually pretty easy. That'll hold. Let's get the other side. That'll be great if that solves it. That was all too easy and just took a couple minutes per side. So I think we're good for a little test drive, see what happens. Well, I was interested about that 17 marking on here and sure enough, these appear to be a 17 millimeter sway bar. So. It is fixed. Absolutely no rattle. That solved it. Those rear sway bar bushings took care of it. That's great. Well, now that it's fixed, let's change parts on the front because we can.
So on the front, a little harder to get to. We've got our sway bar bolts up in here. That's kind of tight. And then we've got these links here where there's a little rubber boot in there and I saw one of them was torn. So they were pretty cheap. I figured it's easy enough to just change those. And as you can see on here, it takes a little Allen key in the middle and then a wrench on the outside to loosen it because it's on uh, like a ball and socket joint so it'll swivel. So that's how you have to hold the bolt in there. It's also a 12 millimeter there. Not a lot of room to work. Certainly doable, and I wonder if my ratchet wrench will fit in there. Of course, the ratchet doesn't fit around that one. A little more space now. Okay, got that out. And a little tight around the CV boot. I wonder, I bet I can move that if I turn the steering wheel, collapse that inward a little bit and get it out of the way. Got it. That also has a marking of 17 on it. You see the old one on the left, the new one on the right, you don't see nearly as much wear as I saw on the rear. The diameters seem a lot closer together, but it's definitely enlarged a little bit, so there's certainly some wear in it. Cheap enough to get these from Toyota, and I figured if I'm doing the backs, I'm gonna do the fronts. I wasn't sure which ones might be worn, so do them both and be done with it. There's a case for a 12 point box on this is it. You don't get a whole lot of movement here. There we go. So now we got the wheel turned back the other way. We're gonna try to get these end links out of here. It's definitely a 14 on there. And we've got a five millimeter Allen in the middle. Forget that Allen oh, that's on. If that Allen's fully seated, maybe we can turn this. Oh, look at that. See if we can get this lower one out now. I'm working blind under there. Can't see where the stud is. All right, there it is. What I didn't understand is these look pretty symmetrical. And yet you buy a left and a right. 
So I don't know why there's a left and a right. So we're going to open up both of them and see what they look like. See if there's any differences. That's my left and that's my right. They look exactly the same, but we'll put them in the way they're supposed to go. I don't know. It's also good to check. Is the new one the same as the old one? And you know, they do seem to be the exact same length. So we're good there. What I saw and not on the old one on this side, but you've got this rubber boot here that holds in the grease. So you can see how that pivots around. It's a little ball and socket joint. One of the boots was a little torn and it might have been on the other side. And that's why I just decided to change them both. They're pretty cheap. They might have been 20 bucks or so. Figured it can't hurt. enough leverage and enough room to move this. Let's see. Yep. Just enough to get it started there. help taking the end link bolts out now do that end link while everything is loose it might give us a little more room to work I wonder if I can zip that off with the impact 14 just went through that forgot that it's a 14 It just breaks it free, but it doesn't want to go past that. <laughs> Apparently I was making sure it was tight. a little better. So, why am I doing this? Because I thought the boot was torn and it was not. There was just a buildup of grease on there. So I probably did not need to change these. I think we'll 
we'll get our bushing back in there. Now we'll turn the wheel back out and see if that gives us a little more play on the upper link. Yep. All done. Wheels back on and we're good to go. Yeah.